people are always looking for a change from the issues they see is deteriorating them. Right-wing populists fuel on this idea. They exploit the weaknesses they see in the society to boost their propagandas. Pat Cadell, an American poster, noted that two-thirds of the Americans believe that Obama wasn't the man they were looking for. He was not the idea of change they wanted. Hence, 75% of the Americans believe that the U.S. was on a decline. And the middle class and the lower class citizens of America didn't want to believe this because they the primary acceptors of the effects of this decline. Steve Bannon, the former Trump advisor, said that the research done by Pat Cadell showed that the Americans wanted someone who will bring them change. Someone that has the power to create or to make America great again. Someone like Donald Trump. Someone like Donald Trump who has stated that he has the mission to make America great again. Hence, without any political background, Donald Trump won the presidential elections. This is also what happened in the reign of Aquino. A lot of problems and issues arose. Hence, people wanted change. They wanted change to come. This is how Duterte won because of his promise that change is coming. Now the question arises, should freedom of speech should be limited to, be, to avoid the uprising of right-wing populists? No. No one has the right to remove, modify, change, or any along, along those lines, the rights of people. Hence, freedom of speech should not be limited to avoid the uprising of right-wing populism. Because first, freedom of speech or any sort of freedom is universal. Second, there is a proper way of dismantling this destructive or constructive utilization of freedom of speech. And last, right-wing populism aids to find the loopholes of social norms. First, human rights are universal. In the preamble of the Declaration of Human Rights, it is stated that the disregard and contempt for human rights have resulted in barbarous acts which have outraged the conscience of mankind. This depicts the winning effects of disobedience and disregard of the human rights has imposed on people. Moreover, this gives due support to further affirm that human rights are universal. Ig ignorance of the rights of people entails the obliviousness to the human dignity of our brethren, resulting into chaotic and barbarous outcomes. Likewise, according to the preamble again, it states that all countries of the UN, which is the Philippines is part of, should respect and hail the sanctity and importance of the freedoms and rights of others. This gives UN, this gives UN countries no power to modify the rights of its citizens. Next, there's a way of dismantling constructive and, de and destructive use of freedom of speech. Maria Gorina III, former Associate Justice of the Court of Appeals, has stated the, that the Philippines and likewise all other international courts with the use of freedom of speech with the Holmes Rule, or the clear and present rule. In Feiner versus New York, Justice Fred Vinson, speaking for the US High Court, said that when clear and present danger of riot disorder interference with traffic in public streets or intermediate threats that peace appears, the power of the state to prevent or punish speech is obvious. 1983, in Reyes v. Bhagat Singh, our Supreme Court compelled the government to issue a permit to a group to hold a public assembly near the U.S. Embassy in Ross Boulevard, there being no showing of any clear and present danger to public order. In Soriano v. MTRCB, Justice Antonio Carpio stated that the Congress may punish any offensive or vulgar language after its utterance with damages, fine, or imprisonment. But, but con the Congress has no power to suspend or suppress the people's right to speak freely because of such utterances. In short, the Congress may pass a law punishing defamation or tortuous speech, but the punishment cannot be the suspension or suppression of the constitutional right to freedom of expression. Otherwise, such law would be, would be abridging the freedom of speech, of expressions, or of the press. Last, last writing populism finds the loopholes of current social norms. In the Arroyo administration, Pinoy feasted on the mishaps of GMA. Pin, Pinoy feasted on the mishaps of GMA. He used GMA shortcomings as his propaganda 
as middle to low, lower class citizens wanted someone who would treat them as their bosses. And Pino used that to his advantage, giving the tagline, Kayo ang boss ko. Next, when Pino took presidency, his populism bit his own tape. Now, President Rodrigo Duterte looked after the problems that arose during Pinoy's reign. People during the Aquino administration wanted change, and Duterte promised that change to come. Some would counter such claim as they see right-wing populism as a form of terrorism and felony as it opposes the current stand of the administration. But no, right-wing populism is not terrorism unless acted upon. Voicing out one's opinion is the right of a person until a clear and present nature of rebellion and terrorism occurs. Right-wing populism is not illegal. In conclusion, the freedom of speech of anyone is not open to any form of change or suppressions. People are free to speak, and that's boundless. However, excessive and misuse of such freedom should be deemed liable for any punishment set by the courts. Hence, the opposition must always take into consideration the things they say or the things they act on. Thank you. <sighs> Yahoo!